Spurgeon here with Revzilla to welcome you to my personal garage. Now, the last time we were here together, we were reviewing the KTM 790 Duke, but today we're on something a little bit different. This is gonna be the Fuel Fluid 1S electric bicycle. And you might be wondering, why are we reviewing an electric bicycle? Well, this particular bike was designed by Eric Buell. Now, if you're not familiar, Eric got his start as an engineer for Harley Davidson before founding Buell Motorcycles in 1983. And over the past 35 years, Buell has built some extremely innovative and interesting machines. And in 2018, he co-founded Fuel, a company that claims to be the new brand in urban mobility. Now, Fuel does have an electric motorcycle in the works, but their first product to market is the Fluid Electric Bicycle. So as a motorcyclist, my interest was piqued. What is it like to commute back and forth to work on an electric bicycle? So that's exactly what I did. I spent a week using this as my daily commuter. And to make things a little bit more interesting, I decided to dress business casual, as if I have a real job, to see if I break a sweat. And before we just jump right into it, you should know that this bike is actually a prototype, and through its testing, the folks at Fuel realized that there's a few components on here that need to be upgraded. So this is gonna get a different fork. Uh, the fork that I'm riding is a spring fork. They're gonna upgrade it to an air fork. The grips will be a little bit different. The tires will be different. It's gonna get fenders both at the front and the rear. And the most important upgrade as far as I'm concerned, it is going to get a more comfortable seat with a post suspension. And I say that because just in the first five miles, it's wildly uncomfortable. Um, and you know exactly how many miles you have on the bike because there is gonna be that little colored dash down here and that colored dash is gonna show you your miles per hour, uh, the power that you're at, the thrust that the, the motor's actually putting out, trip meter, time meter, and most importantly, you are going to have a battery readout so you know exactly how much battery life you have left. So the dash will actually be upgraded to include a pin security system, much like your smartphone, and you would need to put that pin in before it activates the motor. Now, the Fluid's motor is actually a 500 watt electric motor that generates 100 Newton meters of torque and there's dual crank sensors located in the crank at each pedal. So once the bike is turned on, start pedaling and that power will be provided. And it's provided to the rear wheel via a belt drive and an eight speed internal Shimano hub. Now the belt drive I think is ingenious. It works really well, smooth power delivery, and I'm not worried about my pant leg getting caught in the chain or getting grease over my pant leg. The Shimano hub can be a bit clunky from my experience. Uh, you have to stop pedaling to then shift and start pedaling again. I just had a couple of mischiefs. Overall, once I got used to it, it wasn't too bad. So the motor itself actually has five different power settings. And before I ever played around with any of them, I rode the bike just as it is as a bicycle, just to get a feel for the baseline. Once I started throwing around the power, I found that the third power setting is probably your, your compromise setting. You still have to use your legs a little bit, but you get a nice balance between power and longevity out of the battery. And I was still able to comfortably cruise at like 18 to 19 miles an hour. If you really want to have fun, however, that's where you want to crank it up to power level five. And in eighth gear, hustling down the street, I was able to see 30 miles an hour. Really noticeable, uh, the hills in Maniunk trying to climb those. Put it in third or fourth and power setting five and it climbs right up the hill. So that's really where I see the fifth power setting kind of coming into play. And when I was talking to the folks over at Fuel, they said that the production motor will actually have even more top end output. So definitely no shortage of power for city commuting. Now the downside to running this wide open in the fifth power setting is simply the fact that you get a truncated range out of it. Running it wide open with both batteries, um, it took me about 40 miles before I finally ran out of juice in the second battery. Now, fuel's claiming a range of about 125 miles, and that's clearly gonna be in the lowest power setting. If I was really shopping around for this bike, I would definitely be considering the dual battery setup. I think the range that you're gonna see out of the dual battery setup is gonna be completely fine for anything you would need to do within the city limits before having to recharge the batteries. Keep in mind that I am coming at this review much more from the mindset of a motorcyclist perspective. And I've really enjoyed getting to ride this back and forth to the office every day, especially because I live in a city where lane splitting isn't legal. Um, I see this as a really viable method of urban transportation. But there are a few additional things that you're gonna to need to consider. So let me make my way back to the office and then we will wrap up with some final thoughts.
So you can definitely still work up a sweat on the fuel. However, I am far less sweaty than I would have been if I just made that same commute on a traditional bicycle. I think the fluid really does a good job of splitting the difference between the convenience of a scooter or a motorcycle and that of a regular bike. For example, at 70 pounds, it's far lighter than any motorcycle I've ever owned. But compared to a traditional bicycle, it's pretty darn heavy. And when you're trying to get this thing up a flight of stairs into a house or an apartment, it becomes a bit of a bear. And it's far too nice and expensive to leave this chained up out there on the street. Now, in regards to my commute, I was able to get to work faster than I could on a traditional bicycle. However, because I can't take the fuel on the highway, my commute about evened out for what I could expect with my regular day-to-day -day motorcycle. The trade-off there is I would be limited to sticking to the street, I still can't lane split, and then there's all the additional costs. There's registration fees, titling fees, I have to have a special license, not to mention all the gasoline that goes into my motorcycles. Either way, this review opened up my eyes to the potential of electric bicycles and their role in the marketplace moving forward. While I wouldn't want to trade my motorcycle in on one of these, I could easily see the appeal for an electric bicycle like the Fuel for folks that aren't already motorcyclists or they don't already have their motorcycle license. I think it is really going to depend on where you live in the city, what your commute is like, and what kind of storage options you have available for you. Now, if you want to hear more about the fuel fluid from a different perspective, or perhaps you just want more of the nitty gritty information on this bicycle, you want to head over to our online magazine, Common Tread, because I'm going to be passing off the Fuel Fluid 1S to Andy Greaser, our staff writer and bicyclist aficionado, so he can dive in a little bit deeper. And if you want to keep up with all the content we have rolling out at RevZilla.com, you want to make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. I want to thank you for joining us for this first ride review of the Fuel Fluid 1S. I'm Spurge, enjoy the pedaling. <laughs>